You know, last time that I visited Wingspan in a review, specifically the European expansion, I talked about how I dug it, but that I'd be a little bit disappointed if future expansions were just stacks of birds and didn't really change the game in any fundamental ways. And you know what? They did it, and Oceania is here, and not only does it have a whole stack of new birds from down under, but some really significant changes that shake up the game and honestly make it even better. The most substantial piece of new bird tech that you're going to have to deal with are the new player boards. On top of introducing a game and competitive struggle via nectar spent in each habitat, more on that later, the once familiar habitat rows that you've gotten used to have now been retooled in what feels like a direct response to some of the criticism of the original game. The forest and wetland, aka food and card draw rows, are now more powerful, starting essentially a step ahead of the old board, whereas the infamous yo, let's snag some points grassland row starts essentially a step behind the old board, Additionally, forest and grasslands have actions accessible to refresh the food and card trays, adding a little more utility and further incentivizing their use, even when what's on display isn't ideal. Playing a few times with this bad boy, both with new and old verbs, I can tell you that it feels like a slight, albeit a significant, balance adjustment for the better. Eggs feel reined in without being nerfed, and the further abundance of food and cards makes it all that much easier for you to sculpt your engine. But in addition to all that, probably my favorite thing is that it readjusts the value proposition with what you do with any of these three rows. Take for instance, the common grackle. This little base game fella lets you tuck a card to lay an egg. At the cost of a resource, you get a point and a different resource. Decent, but whatever, cards are hard to come by, especially since in the original game, you'd need two wetlands birds to reliably get two cards. However, now stick this homeboy as the first bird in your wetland, you get to consistently take a wetland action that draws two cards, tucks a card to get an egg, which can be the cornerstone of an excellent engine, one that wouldn't have been nearly as viable in the base game. And if that's all the expansion provided, that would be great. But wait, there's more. As I mentioned earlier, Oceania introduces Nectar, a sixth resource and new replacement dice so you can get your hands on this sweet, sticky substance. Nectar, for almost all intents and purposes, is wild. Need to buy a bird? Nectar. Need to power up a board action? Nectar. That said, if a bird's power specifically calls for a type of food, nah, no nectar. Furthermore, as nectar is spent, you put it on the habitat of the bird you played or the action you pumped, and at the end of the game, players snag points based on their ranking, a la round and goals. So, what's the drawback? Well, as with most great things, nectar is ephemeral, fleeting, impermanent. In other words, unspent nectar goes away at the end of a round, adding a slight push-your-luck aspect to the game. And the last major addition is, of course, the birds. Big birds, small birds, flightless birds, which are essentially wild for wingspan purposes. Birds that copy other players' powers. Birds that impact the bird tray. Birds that push your luck. And birds that give discounts on eggs. But of all the birds, the most interesting are the new yellow-powered birds, which activate a power only once at the end of the game. That may seem insignificant, but they too address a criticism of wingspan. These allow a forward-thinking player to account for one or two yellow powers, carefully sculpting their habitats to result in impressive outcomes at the end of the game, heightening the tension between long-term strategic goals and immediate needs without really amplifying the complexity. These are really, really cool. Look, if I were really reaching for criticism on this game, I'd say that by adding more birds, you now have an ungainly stack of avians that you have to manage. With no real convenient way of separating or combining as desired without either shuffling enormous stacks or painstakingly separating, combining, and removing based on expansion symbol at the bottom. Also, by introducing replacement dice and boards, if you are inclined to play with the Oceania expansion from here on out, which I am, except for maybe for teaching the game to beginners who want a lighter experience, 
then you're going to have a bunch of unused components in the box. But if that's the cost, what you gain is so worth it. This expansion adds elements that make an already great game more strategic, more interactive, more dynamic, and better balanced to make more approaches viable. The solo integration of Nectar is incredibly smooth, and there are two new Automa variants to try, one with more nuanced Automa and the other meant as an opponent for cooperative play. Like Tuscany did for Viticulture, Oceania broadens and deepens the game, adds a bit of complexity without making it feel complicated, which is exactly what I want an expansion to be. And that is our review. Thank you so much for watching. I've been Jack for the Cardboard Herald. If you enjoyed this video, we have all kinds of other reviews, interviews, and recommendations via writing, podcasts, and video here on our channel and website CardboardHerald.com. Our content is audience supported, so if you want to show your support, please visit our Patreon. Thank you so much for watching. This has been the Cardboard Herald.